Hey, everybody, and welcome back to the Rails Coach Podcast. Man, I do so many of these, and I always have—I always hesitate a little bit when I say the show name because I just forget which one that I'm uh, doing, and then I'm like, oh, yeah, it's that one. You know, or I'm thinking about the topic and not thinking about, oh, it's this show. Anyway, um, this week we're going to be talking about Rails Routes. Um, if you've done a whole lot with Rails, you're probably a little bit familiar with them. Uh, I'm just going to jump into some of the basic ideas behind them because I, like, uh, this is a, one of the shorter podcasts that I do, and I try and keep it to about 10 minutes. So uh, we will jump right in, get started, get talking about it, and uh, you know, hopefully give you an idea of what, what routing is all about. So uh, basically, when a request comes into your Ruby on Rails application, uh, you're, you're pretty familiar, I hope, with the model view controller uh, way of handling things. So when the request comes in, it somehow makes it to the controller. And then the controller connects to the model to gather information, uh, displays it in the view. The view is sent back through the dispatcher and then out to the client that requested it in Rails. That That's the general idea. The trick is, is uh, mapping the the request to the controller. And there are a lot of different ways that, that this is done, but it's all done through the routes. So routing is, is I don't wanna say it's simple. There are some simple concepts behind it. And so we'll talk about some of the types of routes that come in. Uh, the first one that I really wanna talk about is just the root route. It's, it's pretty simple. Um, it's just root and then um, you tell it where to send it. So uh, I think it's just root and then you you give it a hash rocket and then it and then the controller in action. And the controller in action are in the in the form of controller name uh, and then the hash mark it, I try the number sign, whatever it is. Um, and then the action. And it's not the full controller name, so if you have like site controller, it's just site. Is, is how it works. And then Ruby's smart enough to parse that out. You can also specify it by giving it a, a colon controller and colon action key, and, and that'll work as well. So, so that's your root route, and all of these routes, if they're named like the root route, then they give you a helper that you can use in your controllers and in your views to send people to that path. So you can do root underscore path, which will send them to the uh, forward slash path or you can actually also do root underscore URL and that will take the current the current host and it will it will append it so if you're on localhost port 3000 then it will send them to HTTP colon forward slash forward slash localhost colon 3000 slash and then they'll get to the home page that way um, it's usually not that involved, but anyway, it's it's something that you usually want to do to just define that default path. The next one that I want to talk about is the match uh, method that you have available in your routes. And match, what it does is you do match and then you give it a string and then it matches the path to that string. So you can do things like uh, match uh, post slash colon ID slash edit. Um, now that's a typical actual RESTful route and we'll get into that in a minute but you could actually specify that and then what it'll do is it'll match any request that comes in that matches that path. Now the colon ID in there is actually I forget what they call them but it's a type of embedded um, embedded variable and so what happens is is when you do the match um, post slash ID slash edit and then you do a colon as uh, hash rocket and then you give it the same notation that you would have given it for the for the root route so you give it the the controller hash action and it'll it'll figure it out that colon ID in there what it does is it actually takes whatever's in that place and it sticks it into another variable in your params when you get into the controller. So then you get params colon ID and you can do all the funky and fancy stuff with that. So it, it will pull values out of the path. 
Um, one other thing that you can do is you can actually put a star in there and the star will uh, match anything including uh, forward slashes and then what you can do is you can actually I forget how you pull that no it's it's star that's right it's asterisk and then the name of the variable and so then what that does is the the colon ID will match everything up until that forward slash but it won't match forward slashes so if you did like post slash one slash two slash edit then it won't match that path because the colon ID won't include the slashes however the the splat the asterisk will so if you did um, post slash splat ID slash edit and then you did post slash one slash two slash edit then it would match it and it would put one slash two in a string into that parameter so that that's one way of extracting data out of the path and putting it into a parameter um, the match is really handy you can also do um, I should have I should have looked this up beforehand but I think you can do a slash only let me look it up real quick I usually don't specify or restrict the um, the verbs but it is important on match um, you can restrict it to a, a get or a put or, or whatever um, and it will actually then not allow uh, delete or post requests and I don't see it here let's see post Oh, via. It's colon via. Colon VIA. So, sorry about that. But anyway, um, really handy thing. You can also just do get and then, you know, and then that string. And if it can figure out from the, like, like if you did photos slash show, if it can figure out the photos slash show would be the photos controller and the show action, then you don't need to specify where it goes. Otherwise, you will need to specify that, and you can do that with the colon as, and then, you know, like we said before. So you can do get um, path as um, controller action. You can do it with post, put, and delete as well. And uh, let's go ahead and jump into the RESTful routes. Um, I, I'm not sure if I've talked about them before on this podcast. Uh, basically, if you run the scaffold, uh, so if you do Rails G scaffold, um, and then you specify the definition for your model, then what you get is you get a controller that has like six standard actions on it. And you also get in your routes, you get resources or resource, is it resource or resources? I, it's, it's one thing for me to type it, it's another thing for me to say it. It's resources. And so what you do is you resources and then it, it'll give you the model name and and that's something that's also really handy um, because then it just defines all the routes for you so then you can uh, you can do a get um, photo slash one and it'll know that it needs to load the show action or you can do a put photo slash one and then it will send a bunch of post parameters that it's going to update the photo with and so you you get all of that for free if you want the entire routing table for that, you can go to guides.rubyonrails.org slash routing.html and you can get all of those. And it also comes with the set of, um, since all the routes are named, it gives you a set of helpers for those as well. So that's something to be aware of. It's something that's really handy. And, uh, you know, that's all set up. You can override those uh, by passing a block to the resources method. And then inside of it, you can do a get um, whatever the action is that you want it to do. So let's say you had photos and you, you wanted a resize. Um, so you could go to photo slash one slash resize and uh, it would resize the photo. So what you would do is you would do resources colon photos do and then in the block you would do get resize space or colon or comma not colon comma space uh, colon on hash rocket hash rocket is equals greater than hash rocket 
colon member. And what that does is it tells it this action is going to be called on a particular member of the collection, the overall collection of photos. And, uh, you know, super handy. It's, it's really just a nice way to go. So anyway, that's, that's routing in a nutshell. There's a whole lot more. Uh, like I said, you can go check it out on the Rails guides. Um, I, I highly recommend that if that's something that you're interested in, that you go do that. Um, there, there are a lot of things that you can do with uh, Ruby on Rails routes that are just, they're, they're really nice. And so, uh, and, and this DSL, or domain specific language that they have in Rails, is actually really, it's, it's a whole lot nicer than it was in Rails 2.0 or 2.3. So, I, again, just go check it out. It, it's a it's really, really a good way to figure out uh, how you want your application to behave based on the path that they put into the address bar in the browser. So, anyway, if you want to get a hold of me, you can. I'm on Twitter as CMaxW. You can also call me, 801-367-6164, if you want coaching or need me to help you with your Ruby on Rails app. And I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Thanks for listening, and uh, we'll catch you next week. <laughs>